In a previous video, I showed how to create a 2D tile set and how to use those tiles to create this 3D scene. In this video, I want to show how to import this scene into a game engine, specifically the Godot engine, and how simple the process can be. I'll also share some useful tips that can help keep things organized. So let's get started. First, I'll create a new project in Godot. Now that the Godot project is created, I'll create a folder where I can store the model that I export from Crocodile. Now I'll export the scene from Crocodile to this folder. Here are my export settings. The GLTF and GLB formats have the best compatibility with Godot. I enable unlit mode because I don't plan to use any lighting for this scene and I also choose to embed the textures into the GLTF file so that there will be less files to manage. If you are wondering what the rest of the settings do, you can find more information in the documentation under the exporting section. When I go back to my Godot project, it will show the GLTF file being imported automatically. I can view the model to see how it was imported. Notice how it automatically extracted the textures from the model and saved them in the scene folder. I want the textures to stay embedded, so I'll change this setting and re-import the model by clicking the re-import button. I'll have to delete the textures it created since they were already extracted. If I want to prevent other models from having their textures extracted, I can change the default setting in the project settings. Now that the model is imported, I'll create an instance of it in this empty scene. First, I'll make sure there is a root node to place it in. Then I'll right click and choose Instantiate, and it'll place it into the scene. I'll also create a camera and a character body that can move around in it. Character body needs a mesh instance and a collision shape as well. I'm going to choose a capsule mesh. And I'll also stick the camera inside the character body so that the camera moves with the character. I 
I'll save the scene and then I'll try running it. I notice the colors look a bit odd in the editor, but it looks fine when the game is run. This seems to be due to the default uh, world environment that the editor uses, but it can be toggled off. Also the character doesn't do anything, so I'll have to add a simple script to it so that it can move. I could just click this button here. And I'll choose a basic movement template. And I'll just create it. I'll try running it again. Now the character moves, but it doesn't collide with the scene. So we'll have to export it a little differently. If we take a look at Godot's documentation, there is a section on how to import 3D scenes. All the way at the bottom, there is a section called Import Hints. And it shows that we can use certain suffixes to tell Godot extra things that it can do when importing a model that uses those suffixes. For example, the dash col suffix will tell Godot to include collision to include a collision mesh for the object. So let's add that in Crocodile to the part that the character should collide with. If we take a look in the scene panel, we can see that the water tiles have already been grouped together into their own object. I'll have to group the rest of the tiles that I want collidable into their own object as well. To do that, I'll just select all the tiles and then deselect the ones that I don't want to be collidable. I could click on them or click and drag by holding Shift and Alt. I could also do it a lot quicker by selecting the tiles in the Tile Set panel and then right clicking, go and deselect tiles, deselect tiles within the tile selection. Then I'll right click, go to Faces, Create Object. Then in the Scene panel, I'll rename the object and I'll include the suffix. Now I'll export the scene again, overriding the previous one. If we run the game again, we can see that the character collides with the ground and doesn't collide with the other stuff. The movement is pretty basic because it's using the default script, but you could edit that to make it work a little better. If we want to change the scene, we could just go back into Crocodile. We could add more tiles, things like that. For example, if I edit this, hide the water and then choose some tiles, I'll choose that one, and I'll just make some more of the ground over here, just for an example. And then I'll maybe select these, make it go down a little deeper, and then I'll add more water tiles, one is it? I guess this one. Just add them over here. Just as an example. 
You can make it however you want. And then I just export the scene again. Overwrite the previous one. And then I'll re-import it. And then when I run the game again, it'll look a little different. It'll have more stuff. And you can see how the ground is still collidable over here. So as you're building the scene, you could basically test it in the game and see how everything works. Something useful you can do is create an import script in Godot so that whenever you import a model, it can run some code and make adjustments to the model or other things. Here's an example script I made that iterates through the scene that is imported and finds any mesh instance and sets the back face collision to true for its corresponding collision shape. Um, to get it to run, I have to make sure to select the file in the import settings. So first I'll save it. Then in the project settings, go to import defaults, and there's an import script path here. Now select the import script and save it. Now for existing models that I've already imported, I think I have to uh, manually select them as well. Their import script path doesn't get updated. So since this was already imported, I'll just do that. So now whenever it gets re-imported, it'll run this script and it'll look for any mesh instance 3Ds in, uh, in the object. So it'll, it'll go through them and it'll find uh, this one right here, or maybe it's this one. Anyways, it'll find this and then it'll go down to the collision shape and set the uh, back face collision to true. I think that's how it works so you could do all sorts of different things setting if you want to like have specific settings for specific um, nodes and stuff like that um, it's very useful another useful thing you could do is use export scene data from crocodile and it gets exported as JSON formatted text document and it'll have like all the data from all your objects and instances in the scene. So if we go back into the crocodile, we could see that in the scene we have a water object and a ground object. And here we could export the scene data. And it'll basically export like their positions, their rotations, and we have the inst instances down here. And each object has um, custom properties that you could add. So for example, this ground, I could add a property and name it something like um, uh, whatever, just uh, bounciness maybe, or uh, smoothness, something like that, I don't know. And then we could give it a value like number or string so maybe, and this is like the default value. And for instances, we could add property as well, um, something like that. And then if we, the, each instance ha can have separate uh, values. So if we go back into their custom uh, properties, we could set this as uh, something else. And then when we export it, we could export it uh, here, uh, scene data.
you'd see all the data for it in a JSON format. And in the Godot documentation, we could see that they have some code here on how to retrieve that data. So you could there theoretically have your import script um, whenever you import a model, run through it and um, parse the JSON data and then do adjustments and things based on like the custom properties that you've added to your objects and do all sorts of stuff like that. So there's a lot more control you could have with your scenes and it could all be like automated for you so that you don't have to manage it. So that's just an extra tip to, um, that's a little more advanced, but you can see there's a lot of things that you could do. So that's going to be it for this video. If you want me to focus on anything specific for future videos, just let me know. If you're new to my channel and haven't heard of Crocodile 3D, it is a low poly modeling editor that allows you to use 2D tiles to construct 3D scenes. I have an entire video on how to create the tiles and model shown in this scene that I previously made, so you can check that out as well.